Thanks, Ian. Thanks so much. Um, good evening, brethren, uh, and welcome to our 11th Staying Engaged presentation this evening entitled The Five of Nine Club. What's it all about? For those of you who don't know me, my name is James Dalton, and I have the distinct privilege of being the chairman of the Five of Nine Club. I know that some of you this evening may have heard of the Five of Nine Club and may even know a lot about what it is that we do. Others of you may have heard the name but have little knowledge of what the club's all about. And I've no doubt that there's a few of you out there who've never heard of the Five of Nine Club. And I hope that this evening I can give you some additional information or new information to help you gain a greater understanding of what we're about, why we would recommend any new or young member of your lodge to join, and to give you the skills and tools to be able to go away and recommend the club to your members. So what will we discuss this evening, brethren? Well, we're gonna start by talking at a very high level about what the five of nine is, why we exist, what the purpose of our club is. We'll then zoom out to look at new and young Masons clubs in general. We fall under the umbrella of this with United Grand Lodge of England and why they were set up and what they're for. Then we'll talk a little bit about why we would encourage a member to join the Five of Nine Club. Leaning into that, we'll go on to talk about charity work that we do, social events that we're involved with, how we support the learning and development team in the province, and finally, we'll talk about our membership requirements. And if we do have time at the end, we'll have a brief question session. If there's anything you want further context on or clarity from the presentation. So let's start with our first point and a high level overview. What is the five of nine? Well, in a sentence, the five of nine is the club for new and young Freemasons in Warwickshire. But what does that mean? Well, we're a club within the province of Warwickshire for both new and young Freemasons to come together and to meet brethren of similar age and or Masonic tenure from lodges all around the province. I think it's no secret brethren that in many of our lodges, the average age is quite high. And so one of the issues with the retention of new members, maybe in their twenties or thirties, is getting them to engage with other Masons who may be of a similar age and have similar interests outside of Freemasonry. And this is one of the main reasons why the Five of Nine Club exists. To that end, we look to help people create new friends from outside of their mother lodge, which will then help them go on to encourage visiting for other lodges across Warwickshire. And we know that visiting is really, as we always say, the lifeblood of Freemasonry. And we want to encourage our members to form these new friendships and then to go out and visit their friends lodges elsewhere in the province. We take advantage of the learning and development opportunities which we are supported with by the provincial mentor and his team. Seminars, talks and guest speakers to name just a few, including recently a one hour Q&A session with the Right Worshipful Provincial Grandmaster. In addition to this, we support good causes in and around Warwickshire by giving our time in order to support them and help them. And finally, but by no means least, we enjoy social activities throughout the year, such as paintballing, go-karting, curry nights, family nights, etc. So this is a general overview of what the Five of Nine Club is. But what are we not? Well, the first thing that we're not is an additional order for somebody to join. I'm sure many of us over the years have had that moment after our third degree where we get that friendly tap on the shoulder and given a red form for the Royal Arch or a blue form for the Mark or any other, any other number of orders. We're not an additional order to join. We're purely a club within the province. We're also not a commitment to extra evenings away from home. As we know, as we go through our Masonic journey, we take on offices in our lodge, and that's an extra expectation of time. We may have lodges of instruction or rehearsals, and that's an additional expectation above the six or eight meetings per year we might normally have. That's not the case with the Five of Nine Club. Our members can come to as many or as few as our events as they're able to, and there's no expectation either way. 
We're not a compulsory requirement. I'll come on to later what our membership requirements are to join, but this by no means means that anybody has to join us who's eligible to do so. But I hope by the end of the presentation, you'll be able to recommend it to any new and young brethren in your lodge. We're not a replacement for your own lodge meetings. We know the value that members get by attending their lodge regularly, by taking part in the ritual and the ceremony, the companionship at the festive board. And we're not there to replace that. It's a really important part of their Freemasonry that they attend their lodge. And finally, we're not a substitute for the mentoring that you would receive in your own lodge. Quite the contrary, we're there to support and add value to the great work that all of our mentors around the province already undertake in coaching, training, explaining, and getting people ready for their next office. And we're there to support and help that process. From our website, we describe ourselves in this way. New and young Freemasons are the future of our wonderful organization. And we hope that the Five of Nine will give our membership an opportunity to meet and socialize with like-minded brethren whilst taking part in an array of exciting events and activities. Likewise, giving them a voice to air the views of the younger generation of Freemasons. And again, brethren, as we go through this evening, hopefully you'll see that a lot of what we do aligns with this statement. And in particular, the last line there really stands out for me about giving a voice to air the views of the younger generation of Freemasons. And that's at the very core of what we do. And we're supported in that effort by members of the provincial executive. We have as our patron, the right worshipful provincial grandmaster, David F. Macy. Our club president is worshipful brother, Peter Manning, one of the assistant provincial grandmasters, and he heads up the learning and development team in the province. And our vice president is worshipful brother, David Butcher, the provincial grand mentor. And we work closely with all three of these people to support how the club moves forward and how we can best engage with our young members. And at this point, on behalf of the club, I just want to say a huge thank you to all three of these brethren for their incredible support towards keeping us going and making sure that we've got all the resources that we've needed over the last few years. We couldn't have done it without them, so thank you. So, a little bit of history. What about the name? When I first heard the name Five of Nine Club, I was a bit perplexed about where that name had come from. In fact, I was assuming we'd just be called the Warwickshire Young Masons Club. But you'll know that many of the, our clubs around the country have a particular name. And for us, our name is derived from five forgotten stonemasons from around 245 to 313 AD, who were ordered to create a statue of the pagan god of health by the emperor at the time, but they refused because they were Christian. And these stonemasons were put to death for their refusal to build the statue. Now, brethren, that's a very high level explanation and a very dumbed down explanation of the history behind our name. But there's an amazing paper on our website, which I will give you later, that I'd encourage you to read if you're interested to learn some more. And it may be a good starting point to introduce new brothers to the club. So I've talked about what the Five of Nine Club is, but I've also mentioned new and young Masons clubs. I just wanna take a moment to zoom out and explain this in a bit more detail for anyone on the call who may not understand what they are. In around the early 2010s, many provinces began creating informal clubs for their newer and younger brethren to join in order to provide an opportunity to meet other members of similar age and or experience. Many of these clubs were initially referred to as light blues clubs because their primary audience was those that were new to Freemasonry or who had not yet progressed through the chair of their lodge. And as more and more of these clubs were founded, in 2016, these clubs came together under one umbrella, which is known as the New and Young Masons Clubs or NYMCs. And whilst we're independents, we're not run by United Grand Lodge, the clubs across UGLE do now have close partnerships, working together on charity events, learning and development events, and social events. On the back of that, cross-club visiting is highly encouraged. And this is a pretty new phenomenon for our clubs, but particularly over the period of the lockdown, 
we've seen a tremendous amount of virtual inter-club socials every week. Each year, the club committees will meet in a different province. We were in Leicestershire last year to discuss and share ideas on how to make our clubs even better for our members. And as I said before, we are independent of United Grand Lodge, unlike the university scheme, which is run by United Grand Lodge, but we are fully supported by both the provinces and UGLE to the extent that our guest speaker in 2019 was very worshipful brother, Dr. David Staples, who, as I'm sure you all know, is the Grand Secretary and CEO of the United Grand Lodge of England. And in previous years, we've had guest speakers, including other provincial Grand Masters and also the Assistant Grand Master. So that's a bit of information about the five of nine at a high level and what a new and young Masons club is. Of course, the big question is why would you want to join? And I thought long and hard about this slide and which words to put on and, and what to include, but they say a picture does paint a thousand words. And so here's a picture instead of a thousand words for you. This is the reason that we would encourage members to join the Five of Nine Club. It's about meeting other new and young Freemasons from all around Warwickshire, getting to meet a new group of friends, encouraging visiting across lodges, both in and out of the province, getting to know people's families and having a fun time. And you'll see in the picture here, brethren, that it's not just members here, it's partners as well, and even children in the bottom left there. Many of our social events are open to the entire family and we would really encourage people to come along to them. And in fact, so I've got a few pictures here of some of the events and things that we've taken part in just over the last 12 months. In the top left and left hand side of your screen there, pictures from our Christmas event at Lane 7 in Birmingham. We hired a bowling alley, we did a number of games including beer pong, arcade machines, all to come together and have a good time before Christmas. In the top right of your screen, these peculiar looking brethren with the green hats on, myself included, well this is the Essex Cornerstone Lodge in the province of Essex. And they are a lodge that were founded on the back of their New and Young Masons Club and they are directly part of that New and Young Masons Club and this was their installation evening in December of last year where they had a Bavarian themed festive board and the festive board really was the main event of the night. Free and limited beer, um, Bavarian themed buffet, live umpire band, the full shebang, it was incredible. And then the bottom right of your screen we've got a picture of Lodge of Collegiate in Coventry a number of brethren in that photo there, all of which are members of the Five of Nine Club. And the great thing here is that the three brethren in the middle of the picture were all initiated on that same night, and all three of them joined the club on that same night. And this is the future that we want for the club. So that's a broad outline about why to join, but let's go into a bit more detail. What we do in the Five of Nine Club can really be boiled down into three main areas or pillars if you like, and they are charity, social events, and learning and development. And I wanna take a few minutes just to go through each of those in detail. And we'll start of course with charity. We encourage five of nine members to maintain those lessons from their initiation, i.e. that line in the ritual which says, the distinguishing characteristic of a Freemason's heart. Now this is a public forum so I won't go into any more detail but I'm sure all of us know the part of the first degree ceremony that I'm referring to. But of course many of our members will be young men, many with families and so consistent financial donations might not always be possible especially right now. And so in light of this what we tend to do is focus on giving of our time to support good causes in and around Warwickshire I want to give you two specific examples of what we've done recently. Firstly, we partnered with Acorns Hospice to provide facility to repaint some of their rooms over the course of a weekend, completely free of charge. More recently, two of our members did a virtual sponsored walk to Freemasons Hall and back. They mapped out the equivalent distance from Yenton Assembly Rooms to Freemasons Hall and back, and then walked that distance in their back gardens, 
one of them doing over four and a half thousand laps of their back garden to get to the distance. And this resulted in them raising over 1500 pounds in sponsorship for the 2023 festival. Very recently, we've been providing shopping, prescriptions, and other essential support to brethren during lockdown. Now, these are not members of the club we've been providing this for. These are any members of Warwickshire who needed our help. Maybe they were shielding, or their partner was shielding, or they couldn't get out for some reason, and they needed somebody to go and collect their prescription or to go and do a shop for them. We did that for them over the course of lockdown, and we're continuing to do it now for those very vulnerable members. And to date, there are over 30 occasions where we've supported brethren or their widows in Warwickshire. And here are some photos of some of the events that we've done for charity. The bottom of your screen there, when we visited Acorns Hospice to help them with painting. The top right was when we celebrated their 30th anniversary. And the peculiar picture of the shopping in the top left of your screen, well, that was a special moment for us because that was the very first shop that we did just two days after the lockdown was announced to support a vulnerable member of the province. So that's an overview of charity. Our other pillars are learning and development. During the lockdown, we've partnered with the provincial grand mentor and the executive team to provide sessions for our five of nine club members. The first of these was very well attended and successful, and that was our live question and answer session with the right worshipful provincial grand master. He gave us over an hour of his time to talk about his experience over the last 10 years, his journey through Freemasonry, his view of the future, and some words of wisdom for new and young members. That was so successful that we followed it up with a second live Q&A, but this time with the most excellent Grand Superintendent, Philip Hall, the ruler of the Royal Arch in Warwickshire. And he talked to us about the indissoluble link between the craft and the Holy Royal Arch, what the role of a Grand Superintendent even is, for those that didn't know, and also gave us some highlights of his time as the Deputy Grand Director of Ceremonies in the Craft. And we're going to continue to run these online sessions over the remainder of this year, including, I'm able to announce this evening for the first time, a talk from very worshipful brother Tony Harvey, who was the 2012 Prestonian lecturer. And this talk is entitled Freemasonry. Does it live up to expectations? And this will be specifically targeted at new and younger members, i.e. members of the Five of Nine Club. And this talk deals with the issue of balancing Freemasonry with the demands of modern life. Next year, we're going to look to host in-person events with the assistance of the provincial team. And to let you see behind the curtain, just for a moment, brethren, one of the ideas we're working on is an event called, you're about to become a lodge officer, now what? And this is specifically aimed at brethren who are about to take that step into the progressive offices, either inner guard or junior deacon. What does the role involve? What does progression look like? What ritual will you be expected to learn? And as I said earlier, this is not a substitute for the mentoring in the lodge. It's not a substitute for a lodge of instruction. It's to give additional value and support to those brethren from new and young members who have been through this process in recent years. I referenced a moment ago our live Q&A with the Provincial Grand Master. I just want to share this screenshot of that night with you. We had nearly 80 members of the province attend to spend an hour with him and it was absolutely fascinating. And I'd encourage you to sign up for the Five of Nine updates on our website because we're going to be doing more of these events in the coming months and that'll be the first place to get the news. And then our final third pillar is social events. We have regular social events for both members, other Freemasons, and their families and friends. These include paintballing, go-karting, clay pigeon shooting. We went to Lane 7 at Christmas last year for bowling and games, curry nights out, an annual trip to Scotland. And this is an event that we usually do in November every year. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do it this year for obvious reasons, but this is where a number of our club members will go across the border to Scotland to witness Scottish ritual and we go to a lodge installation meeting. 
many of our new members will have never seen ritual outside their own lodge or even maybe their province. So to go to another jurisdiction and see it, it's a really special two days. Looking forward, we're also planning social visits to other new and young Masons clubs across UGLE. I referenced the Essex Cornerstone Lodge as part of the Essex Cornerstone Club earlier, and we've got a close partnership with them and we're going to continue to go to their installations. And I can't wait to see what the theme of their festive board is this year. But we're also looking to partner with clubs in Bristol to give our brethren an opportunity to see the unique way that Bristol workings work as well. And we think this will provide a great social few days, but also add on to learning and development as well. And of course, we're always supporting provincial events. In particular, the Provincial Grand Lodge meeting, which usually happens in May. And our big highlight of the year is the Initiate Supper in October, where we have a stand set up to talk to recent initiates about the club and why we believe it adds value to their Freemasonry. And again, I've got some photos here of recent social events to share with you from Ghetto Golf in Birmingham to a great paintballing day out. And all of these brethren mix from different lodges and in some cases, different provinces come together, have a wonderful day, but then go away and have new friends to go and visit in the lodge room going forward. So brethren, that's a brief outline of what the Five of Nine Club is, what it isn't. It's an outline of what a new and young Masons club is and our three pillars, charity, learning and development and social. So what about if I know somebody who wants to join? What if I want to join myself? What are the membership requirements? Well, you need to be a subscribing member of a Warwickshire Lodge or a Freemason living in and or working in Warwickshire. So either a member of a lodge that meets in Warwickshire or if you're from another province, you need to live or work in the province. You need to be aged under 55. And that's it, brethren. Now, different clubs across the country do have different requirements. Some require members to not be of provincial grand rank. Some require members that have not been through the chair yet. And there's a variety of different membership rules. But we know that in Warwickshire, we've got a really unique province. We've got members that are just starting their Masonic journey that are aged 45 to 55. We've got some members that have already been through the chair and are in their 30s. We've got provincial officers in their 30s, but they fall into the category of a new or a young Mason. And that's why we have this really expansive pool of people that can join the club. So how do you join? Either yourself, or if you're a lodge mentor, a proposer or a seconder, how do you get somebody who's in your lodge to join? Well, it's really simple. Visit our website, fiveofnineclub.org.uk. There's a £25 joining fee to join the club, followed by a £20 annual subscription every year. The club tie is included with the joining fee. It's a special tie, different to the standard provincial tie, and we have special permission from the Provincial Grand Master that anybody who's a club member can wear that tie in their own lodge. So it makes you stand out and it's a great talking point at the festive board. Why is your tie different? Well, let me tell you about five of nine. As a side note, anybody on the call who's already a member of the club or knows someone who is, anybody who was a member of five of nine before the 23rd of March this year, we've automatically extended your membership for free until the 1st of October 2021 to support you through the current coronavirus situation. So if you were a member before the 23rd of March, you don't need to renew by paying, your membership has automatically been renewed for you. So brethren, that's a brief outline of Five of Nine. I hope that if you're on social media, you would follow us to get the latest updates. This is where we publish all of our events first before they go to the province. Our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are on there. And what I'd love to do now, brethren, is take any questions that you may have. Yeah, thanks very much for a very interesting uh, uh, presentation about the Five of the Nine Club. Uh, you might have seen that put up a, a question to say, uh, what, why the Five of the Nine Club? And you, uh, you've answered part of that. I just wondered what the nine uh, referred to. There were nine stone mazes in total five of which refused to build the um, 
the uh, statue uh, and the others did not refuse. Uh, and so if you want some more information though, there's an excellent paper on our website, which is a little teaser to get you to go and visit our website. Um, but I would encourage you to go and read that. It takes about five minutes to read through and it's under the about section at the top of the page, but it really goes to some great detail about the myth and the legend behind the name of the club. A great question, thank you. I'm still consider myself a young Mason because I was initiated in 2009 when I was actually 55 years old. I, mean, I, know I probably look more than that now. Um, Not at all. We've been following over the lockdown period some of the very interesting presentations that other, um, shall we say, light blue clubs have been putting on over Zoom, free, uh, Facebook and so on and so forth. Uh, it seems that most of them have the requirement that you are a young mason and have not yet received provincial honours. Now, what when the five and nine club was first initiated, uh, was it initiated? I don't know if that's quite the right word. What was quite disappointing to me as a young mason, I couldn't join because I was over 55. And to be honest, I don't think that's very fair. It should be open to anybody who has either not been through the chair or um, has not received provincial honours because that's the ruling that most of the other light blue clubs adopt. I don't see why Warwickshire should be any different. I mean, it's the first few years in masonry in some respects I found very somewhat difficult because I didn't meet younger people as it were as I say I look at ancient but um, that's neither here nor there and although we did some visiting it was quite limited so I, I, I feel quite disappointed about that, that, that there is this age restriction I mean some people might even claim that it's discriminatory um, so I would hope although I would say it's probably too old for me now Hello, but well, we do have a younger Mason in our lodge, but he's now 59. And he would certainly like to join activities in, in the sort of social activities that you put on, as would be myself. And it is rather disappointing to me that we don't seem to be allowed to join. Thank you. Richard, thank you for the question. And, you know, we, we take all feedback, you know, on board and we absolutely want to make the club as accessible as we possibly can to the broadest possible selection of people. Currently there's just over 40 new and young Masons clubs in the country and they all have a variety of different membership rules as you've quite rightly outlined. And so a consensus isn't there yet with all of them. But what I would say is that rules are always open to be reviewed first of all. Um, but secondly, we're not excluding people, which is really important. We're not excluding anybody from attending our social functions, our learning and development functions, or our charity functions, who wishes to do so. And as I showed you on the screen earlier, you know, we have wives and partners and children that come along to the events as well, because it's about building a community within the community, within Warwickshire, and you would be absolutely welcome to come to any Five of Nine event that we have. Um, but certainly if you wanted to reach out to me privately, which you can do through the website, I'd be more than happy to have a further discussion with you about your particular situation, if that's okay. James, good evening. What's the size of the club? How is it progressing? And do you specifically or have you considered going to lodges and encouraging them to ensure that young initiates uh, join the club? Perhaps the lodge will uh, either pay for or in some way have a financial inducement for the uh, when an initiate joins to uh, automatically become a member of Five of Nine. Richard, thank you for the question. I guess really three questions in there. Um, 
the first question about how big the club is at the moment we've got about 250 members uh, on our books which we're, we're, we're delighted with but we always would like more people to join the club uh, in terms of how things are going and how we're progressing I'll, I'll kind of link it into question two and three really um, there's certainly an opportunity for us to continue to promote the club and to talk about the great work we're doing and it's great we've got this platform this evening to be able to do that with the support of the province um, we are actively working in the background right now for a plan for when we come out of this current situation as to how we can get more representation from the club in lodges specifically at the time when somebody is initiated whether that be a physical presence from one of us or one of our members going to that initiation ceremony or whether that be through the provincial office and peter manning as our president and david butcher as our um, vice president supporting us to get information out there to candidates once they've come through james thank you the uh, provincial grand master um has a booklet that obviously is presented to an initiate and there is a small sticker section or section in the rear of the book. Um, you know, very interesting. Perhaps I can get in touch with you when uh, 7th Street is back up and running and see what we can do in the uh, newsletter. I'd be absolutely yeah. delighted to talk to you about that. Absolutely no problem. And you're right, there's an amazing book that goes out from the Provincial Grandmaster when somebody is initiated. And I know that Worship Brother David Butcher is always working to refine and improve that on behalf of the provincial team as well. So who knows what the future holds? The future is long. Evening, James. Uh, congratulations on a super presentation. Expect no more from a member of Collegiate. Um, can I ask, uh, Essex Cornerstone, from what you were saying, would appear to be a lodge in itself. Yes. And I wondered how that was working as against our approach within Warwickshire to not be a lodge for New England Masons. Thank you, Andrew. So it's a great question. Um, Essex Cornerstone is actually two things. Um, there is the Essex Cornerstone Club, which is their New and Young Masons Club, um, which is in many respects very similar to the five of nine club and operates in a very similar manner what they went on to do was to consecrate a new lodge within their province that was called the essex cornerstone lodge which was kind of um, married to or twinned with the club and the requirements to join that lodge is that you have to be a member of the club and they only meet twice a year they meet once in december for their installation meeting which as you've seen from the photos is a bumper party yeah. Uh, and they meet once in June for an educational meeting. So that could be a, a paper, a lecture, a seminar or, or something of that nature, but something that is specifically targeted towards the demographic of the club. Um, there are no plans for us to do anything like that at this stage because they have a much larger membership down there. But I'm hoping that the brethren on the call tonight will go away and sing the praises of the club to all in their lodges and like I say, the future is long. Who knows what might happen in the future? I'm not planning anything, by the way, just because I can see the provincial grandmaster out the corner of my eye. Um, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. I just want to add my thanks to um, to James for a, a, an absolutely superb um, presentation this evening, um, and indeed to all of his predecessors who've guided us from the very um, initial concept of Five of Nine. We were the third Young and Freemasons Club formed in the United Grand Lodge of England. <coughs> and I'm very, very proud of that because the province needed it. They truly, truly needed it. And um, they're nothing short of superb. I cannot sing their praises highly enough. And um, I hope that they go on from strength to strength. Some interesting ideas coming out this evening. Of course, we haven't got it totally right. Whoever will. But by gum, we've come a long way in such a short period of time. And it's because there are some excellent people at the helm. Um, and James, you've shown yourself to be just one of those, a superb presentation. And I thank you very much indeed. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, James. Um, I think uh, next Wednesday, we will be um, having a talk about Solomon. 
So I'd like to add, add my thanks to James. Great presentation. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I hope you all have too. Um, and the recording will be up as usual by Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian.